Sophie here, I'm in Southampton for Takedown Festival and I'm here with two members of uh, Fearless Vampire Killers. How are you doing? Hey, we're good, we're good. Yeah, good. Yeah, not bad, thank yeah, you. Good. Thank now, you. how are you feeling today? Are you raring to go for the gig or is it one of those days where you have to kind of get yourself into the zone a bit? We're here a long time. Yeah, just because we got here so early. We used to kind of getting here, setting up and then you're kind of ready to go. But now we did that and now we've got hours, yeah. to, hours to talk to you. Yeah. Not just you, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bit excessive. Jay get bored. In a way, it's good because then we can go watch some bands. Yeah, we can actually watch some bands. We've already got, already got a busy schedule going on. Who's on the agenda that you really want to watch, if possible? Um, well, I just watched, I just watched Zokes on the good. main stage. Yeah. Those guys are coming on tour with us in May as well, yeah, so yeah, yeah. take them out. Uh, and then I'm going to go see Colt 45, our boys, and Creeper as well. I'm going to go see those guys. They're playing at a similar time. So I was with Mallory Knox as well. That might be hard to watch because. They're on. I think they're on just after us on a different stage. So a sweaty stage, won't you? Be coming down from your gig. Well, I've been. I've been here before, and it gets pretty yeah, sweaty going, in there. Anyway, going straight there. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I was just talking to him, and he was saying that they then they got back from America yesterday. Yeah. So he's jet lagged and trying his hardest not to be really drunk by the time he goes on stage. <laughs> but he said he'll probably lose the battle. So I'm just going to go just to see that. Knowing him, he <laughs> definitely. Him, like, will. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> it's going to be interesting isn't yeah, it? yeah it's going to be fun now last night I had a bit of a marathon watching your YouTube videos okay. last night just to gauge you know what you're all about yeah, yeah. and I got a bit sad at one point because you were saying how you can't get British bands to take you on the road well it's not like we, we, we've like been asking them going oh please <laughs> it's just not transpired that way really like I guess we're more US centric with our sound and uh, and really until now saying this like there's actually a really cool little kind of scene of bands like us bubbling under now like with bands like Creeper that I'm talking about there's a lot of and Zokes there's cool bands coming up that we, I reckon we can fit in with but until now we've been a bit different to the UK scene I guess so it hasn't really worked out that way you know we're a bit too heavy for the likes of Don Broco but not quite metal enough for the likes of Very Tomorrow so it's kind of just the way it is we're like the Engli English puss puss metal <laughs> <laughs> use like events like this to go up to your mates that you do know in yeah. these bands and go come on give it a go it might be quite great yeah. Yeah. but that's the thing it's always we do do that but we're also extremely drunk about it <laughs> yeah. and then, so then the next day you forget that you even work because they always go yeah man totally like, and it's the same with us people yeah we should totally talk but then the next day you completely forgot you even said yeah, that yeah. <laughs> usually happens and then it all goes through like all the loopholes and stuff and it's just like you know but I think I think you'll see it changing. I mean, we're getting big enough in our own right now for people not to have a choice soon. <laughs> so <I think> we, <laughs> we better take them on tour. So, you know, it should be all right. As you were saying, though, you are more acceptable in America because they like the theatrics. They're not opposed to, you know, doing costumes and stuff like that. Would you ever, if the opportunity came up, relocate 100% to America? Yeah, I'd, li I'd definitely like a house in America. I don't think I'd like to live there all the time because I find there's certain things about the US that I find a bit irritating um, I do like European culture but as far as touring goes and like I, I'd spend most of my year there well you know I'd, that's where we belong really as a band so like I've, I've always wanted happen. to live in America ever since I was a kid I'm sure it and, um, and then going there made it kind of stamped it that yeah I, yeah, yeah, I want totally. to live here <laughs> it is a really cool place so like yeah I think you'll find as soon as you've got to do, it, do things in steps but I think you'll see a lot when we finally when we've been there once before on a tour I think when we get the chance to like kind of reignite that and do some more you'll find us spending a lot of time there do you worry about how your English fans will react to that because they're fiercely dedicated to you guys and everything that comes with being a fan of you guys do you yeah. think that they'd be a bit like oh. we're, quite, we're quite lucky because I think because we've got quite a good dialogue going on with our fans they understand that we need to grow as a band so like we, I mean we just went out just toured Europe like a lot of load of countries, we went to Germany, France, Italy, Switzerland, 
Netherlands. So that was us leaving home, but like I think they can, they're, they're quite supportive. They just understand that we need to like, but not doesn't mean we're going to neglect England forever. It just means that we need to go elsewhere. We can't just tour England all the time. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to put that stunt on your development, do you? Yeah, you want to totally. just go as far as you can. And then you know, if we need to like carry on being a band, you need to grow. And I think they understand that, so it's quite cool. I wanted to talk about your social media thing that you you yeah, set yeah. up because when you were younger, did you find that music to you was like a community and it was really important to you in that way and has that kind of spurred you to do all these things when you're in a band yourselves? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess everyone had like like, uh, like clicks of people that they like identified with. I don't know about you, your friends when you were younger, I assume you all like metal really, didn't you? Yeah. Did you know, or like, you know, like you, you all, you find common ground in sort of, in music. You know, we were all into pop punk when I was younger. I was like, oh yeah, Blink-182, Bowling for Soup, you know, I was like, and that's what we listen to and Green Day and like that's what brings people together so I guess it's, that, that, I guess it's easier now to be into a lot of different music because back then it, you kind of didn't want to buy like a pop punk album because you was into metal you just think oh, I'm just going to buy this and not like it and like that whereas now you can just listen to it and then yeah. judge for yourself whether you're going to like it and then go out, go out and buy it so there was um, a lot I'd say there's more more kind of um, what's the word elitism yeah like, is it that clicks yeah. so I clicked at the same time as well um, yeah you had your metal people and now everyone just likes everything like, so so I mean it's yeah it, it, like that is what influences though to like kind of bring all this stuff together now because bands are more like a lifestyle well with us anyway we, we consider ourselves a bit of a lifestyle band being a fan of us is if you want to be, there's a lot to get into. There's a lot of stuff there. We do a lot of things, a lot of writing, comic books, you know, you know, just podcasts, extra shit. So we, Fearless Fanboy Killers, will fill your time. It's a full-time <laughs> commitment <laughs> being a fan. So you're workaholics. Do you have to be busy at all times or you go mad? I think we enjoy... I think, one, you have to. Two, we enjoy doing what we do. And three, like, this is our job. Like, unless we like this is how we survive so unless we work and we make sure that stuff's happening we go hungry <laughs> necessity a bit yeah, so but it's like you know we 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 enjoy it you've got to otherwise you don't go put for yourself through all the punishment the bands go through I've always kind of felt like I I just got to do what, what I have to do like so I've never really thought of it as work um, but then if there's a day well a few days sometimes where I've got nothing to do I I don't think I need to do something. I'll just quite happily just, just sit and yeah. <laughs> just do nothing. Fester. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah, so, yeah, we are like, so I'm like Luke's much more easygoing than me. So Luke, Luke will, Luke will like, Luke will just like, if you need him for something, he's there, done. If he's not, he'll do what he wants. Me, I'll very much like have to schedule me time. I'll be like, this day I am not doing anything because I need to not go mental <laughs> but most of the time yeah it's quite it's quite full on what do you do in that me time do you literally just sit there and like stare yeah, that's it. <laughs> I just I watch paint dry <laughs> no um, I, I, I do all sorts of stuff I watch a lot of stuff on like, a lot of films we're a big film buff so I, I watch a lot of that and I eat hideous food in the club and fester <laughs> and, you know just go out I went to the natural history museum the other day that was quite cool yeah, I went. Yeah. <laughs> you find it's weird what ends up being influential to what you end up writing about and singing about, like weird trips to museums and just random things like that. Like when you're a musician, your life influences you. You know, like that's it. Like especially like coming on, we've already written loads for our third album, and a lot of that is based around some experiences we had um, at the end of 2013 and start of 2014. So like, yeah, that all that like anything that happens to you, then you use it, good or bad. It's like ultimate Moses, it gets in there and it has to come out somewhere. Yeah, be it a love story or a or a hate story, <laughs> you know. 
What's the more? What's the, the balance at the moment? More hate or love? I think I think it's yeah, a bit 50-50. I think we're quite romantic, but in a kind of twisted way. <laughs> the way it should be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you're going back on the road with Black Veil Brides again. How does it feel that they welcome you back again and they want to be with you again? That must be quite nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Like they've been really, really very kind to us, and I think I think we're minimal hassle, aren't we? Yeah. I think we're not horrible. Some bands are cunts. We're not cunts. So you seem quite chilled out, actually. We are quite. We're reasonably chill, and like we we like to be polite. Um, uh, you know, we don't like to get in people's way too much, and we don't we don't like take liberties. I think, you know, they like that, and also we like a drink as well, and I think they like a drink. That helps. <laughs> Morale boost. Absolutely. So we get on well. So I think that's just that's that's why they're just good company. <laughs> Do you think also the fact that you're both kind of polarising bands that you've got that common ground and you yeah, can discuss that, that maybe? I think it's a bit of that. I think there's an understanding there when you're a kind of band that incites any kind of. Uh, reaction in people there's a certain st- amount of stuff you have to deal with and uh, I think once when you've both been in a similar position and Blackford Brides have really had to work for what they're where they're at today you know they've had to like basically ch- tunnel through a heap of shit in order to get there I don't even know if I'm allowed to swear or not but I'm just oh, going go for right it ahead. A, bit late. <laughs> <laughs> a bit late now but um, yeah so like I think there's a common ground there like people that you understand each other and generally bands like that are actually quite nice they're quite open to being friends with people so yeah I think there is that has there been a time where things have got a bit too much with the negative comments that you thought shall we make it a bit easier for ourselves shall we just be bland and a bit like everyone else or have you always thought stuck stick to your guns no no not really like I think everything every decision we ever make has been because we've wanted to make it you know like and we we've we've always we've had a plan since kind of like quite early on that we've always wanted to evolve and we've always wanted to kind of go to new places and you'll see that with the next album the next album is going to be very dark but kind of uh much more relatable I would say it's like we're coming into a very new phase of Phyllis Van Pikeman's and I think people are going to like it so yeah everything we've all we've done we've always been fully committed to so that's not going to change so yeah until... so it's never really been because I don't give a shit I mean so someone was taking the piss just the other night and Luke sorted them right out so that's that's oh, what, what is that why that happened <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> that's what happens no, I'm joking, but, you know. <laughs> what happened to the other guy um. <laughs> we move on. Yeah. Yeah, I think management wouldn't like us to delve into yeah, that. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I t- well, I tell you this: he's probably never going to be a fan of our band. <laughs> yeah. I don't want him as one of your fans. No, exactly. <laughs> no. Some more positively. You know, people, some people think that you're in a band that you're just an object and they can say what they like. If I went up to some guy in the street and went, "You're shit," I'd expect to get hit. Yeah, rightly so. <laughs> and that happened. Yeah. So. Think again. I don't condone violence, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on a lighter note, you're playing Download Second Stage. Yep. That's great news, isn't yeah, it? It's it's amazing great. news. Yeah. What incredible. can we expect for that? Any special production details or anything fancy? Yeah, happening? Think about that um, on the on the road. Yeah. Tour, we were trying to think of what we could do. And I think at the moment all we can think of is having a choir, yeah. but I don't know whether that's... I think it's definitely going to go, because we make no secret of the fact that we're not backed by any huge label at the moment. Not that we wouldn't want to be, but, you know, we're not. And uh, so we don't have huge amounts of money, but there's definitely ways. So we can't have, like, fire going everywhere and things like that <laughs> yet. We'll save that for main stage, but... Um, but right now, I think we're going to definitely focus on making the musical production the best it can be. So I think we're going to have some interesting extra bits, be it like some extra singers or extra like like maybe some more solely backing vocals and shit like that. Or like, and we're going to get some extra instrumentalists as well. We're going to get someone on keys and sounds and stuff. So it's going to be pretty epic, isn't it? Pretty epic, yeah. yeah. Well, one final random question to end the interview: Who would play you in a film of your life? Who would play me? We, we I always say Ryan Gosling just to piss off Lawrence because he, he seems to think that I'm uh, super, super self-centred. So that is probably the most self-centred person you could ask to play you. So I'm going to say Ryan Gosling. Watch that. I definitely <laughs> Mine was um, 
either Kurt Russell from uh, what film was he? <laughs> the, the Thing, because we watched The Thing the other day and said he looked like me. Or I took like an online test, you know, that kind of thing, and it said it, it would be Owen Wilson. Okay, the, um, Wilson. The I'd be guy, good. Yeah. I think Owen Wilson would be good. Very good, me. Thank you. I think he would. There you go. Good choices. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.